Hello and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined us today. Today's devotional will be brought to us by Pastor Andreas Bakai. He's a lead pastor at the Walla Walla University Church. Pastor Andreas, welcome to Daily Bread. Thank you. Now, as we always do, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for your loving watch care over each one of us, Lord. And I pray that as we open and study your word today here on Daily Bread, Lord, I pray that your spirit will bless and guide. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, life is interesting. It has its ups and it has its downs. Um, sometimes it's sunshine, sometimes it's rain, sometimes it's overcast, it's in between. Uh, the last couple of days have been interesting for me. Um, just last week, I had the opportunity and I would say the privilege to visit with some people in hospital. And when I walked into the room, uh, there was a group of people, spouse, brothers, um, grandkids, others who had loved this person who for over 20 years had battled and suffered with illness and finally was laid to rest. And then just this morning, two hours ago, I got another call, went to see a family. And this family um, has now been given the news that someone close to them, dear to them, a daughter in fact, only in their 20s, has been laid to rest. A family where someone battled for 20 years, a family where someone after 20 years laid to rest. What do you do when the world is shaken? What do we do when we are in great difficulty, it feels like the ground beneath us is unstable and we don't know how to move forward? Is there anything that we can do when we feel like we have no foundation? Today I want to bring you to the Word of God and come to Psalm 46. And I'll read it for you, beginning in verse 1 through to verse 3. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. This psalm came to me as I sat with some of these families. This psalm may have come to you in your own moments where you felt like the foundation of your life has been shaken. And we find here in the midst of an ordeal that the psalmist is referring to that brought him to pen these words that the psalmist announces he is unafraid. He says, therefore, we will not fear. And it's interesting because this word therefore in verse two points back to verse one. Why will we not fear even when the foundation of our life has been rocked and shaken? When you have woken up thinking it's another day, gone to work and been interrupted 30 minutes into your shift to be given such tragic news. The reason they can be unafraid is because God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And if God is this to his people and to me and to you, regardless of your situation and what you're going through, the psalmist says, why should we fear? And the answer the psalmist gives back to us is we should not. And I don't think the psalmist, my friends, is saying we should not be nervous. I don't think the, nerve, the psalmist is saying that uh, we may not have fear, but I think the psalmist is saying we should not be in a perpetual state of fear. It's a positive, emphatic, negative statement. We will not fear. It's a bold declaration that we will be confident in the Lord even though life is difficult. God is in the heavens and he remains in control of the outcomes of our lives. And so we can remain confident and calm knowing God will provide. And it's interesting when you read the rest of the Bible, you will see that this testimony is repeated over and over again in the Psalms as David speaks. Uh, for example, David told us earlier in Psalm 3 verse 1, he said, O Lord, 
how my adversaries have increased many arising against me. And if you've read the life of David, you know this is not simply metaphorical. David had adversaries. In the face of this opposition, David anchors his trust in God. And then he says in verse 6 of Psalm 3, I will not be afraid of 10,000 people who have set themselves up against me. With his faith in God for David, it did not matter who raged against him. God was greater than any tragedy, any circumstance, any fight, any distress that he was threatened with. David also gives us a similar testimony. If you have a pen, write this one down as well in Psalm 23 verse 4, but you probably know it. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because you are with me. In this life-threatening trial that causes him to write this world-famous psalm, he announces again that he will not fear because God is with him. A few more. David confesses in Psalm 27 verse 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. And you can finish it for me. Whom shall I fear? This is a rhetorical question David asks, requiring a clear answer, which is no one. I will fear no one because the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is his deliverance. David reasons, I will fear no one. And then he adds, the Lord is my defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Rhetorical again, you see what David is doing. And what is the answer? No one. He fears no one because the Lord is the defense of his life. And then verse 3, he says, Though a host and camp against me, my heart will not fear. Psalm 27, now verse 3. My heart will not fear. This is David's firm confidence. And so, friends, in times of great difficulty, when we feel like the ground is shaking beneath our feet, and it seems like the world is collapsing around us, there is one foundation that will never be moved, and that is God himself. In fact, Proverbs 18, verse 10, says later on that the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous man runs to it and is safe. And it reminds me of a hymn, a hymn that um, I grew up singing. Maybe you know this hymn as well. Uh, it's called Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Uh, it was written in 1887 by Anthony J. Showalter, who was writing a letter to a couple of his friends, I think two different friends, and he found out as they were corresponding that both of these close friends had recently lost their spouses, and they were grieving. They were heartbroken that their life partners had gone before them. And so in an effort to try to give some uh, solace, right, to provide some solace, Showwater references Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27. Let me read it for you. It says that the eternal God is your dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting arms. And meditating on this passage, Showwater sits down at his piano. You can imagine him perhaps coming into his parlor opening the windows, letting the light flood through, see the dust perhaps sparkling in the air. He opens his piano, he sits down, and then he writes the chorus for this hymn. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Then he calls his friend who was a hymn writer, and her name was Alicia Albright. Hoffman. And he said, Alicia, I have this chorus. I've been meditating on Deuteronomy chapter 33. I've written about the ability we have, even in times of difficulty, to lean on God. And this is the chorus. She listens to the chorus. She, she reads the words, and then she comes and helps him write the lyrics for the verses. What a fellowship. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. And then he goes on, oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how 
bright the path, grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. And then the very last verse, which connects us back now to the Psalms. What have I to dread? Like David, it's rhetorical. What have I to fear? It's rhetorical. No one, nothing. Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. And friends, this is the same for us today. It's true for us thousands of years later because the Bible is a timeless book that speaks to every person from every culture at every age. And it speaks to us at every stage of our own lives. And as we look around us, there is so much in this world that can cause us to fear. There are phone calls that will cause us to tremble. But when we look upward to the throne of God, we have reason, even in the midst of storms, to be confident and calm. When we look to the Lord and trust he's causing all things to work together for our good. Though that outlook may be bleak, the look up is always bright. So I don't know where you find yourself today as you listen to this small meditator meditation. The world may be collapsing, but you can stay strong. No matter the trials you face, you can remain triumphant through your friend in God. Though the earth should change, David says, and every one of us can see ourselves in this psalm. We've encountered times when we have doubted uh, if we can make it another day, where our existence has been shaken and turned upside down. David says, though the mountains slip and go into the sea, and sometimes we look around, the economy is crashing, inflation levels are going up, buying food can be difficult, trying to live from day to day is hard, the retirement portfolio may not be as strong and robust as it once was, but when the mountains slip into the sea and it feels like your life is imploding, know that God is with you. And when David also speaks about the waters roaring and foaming, He speaks about this because this is what happens once the mountains and the rocks fall into the sea. And there is this jarring collision of both mountain and sea. It's turmoil. And when our lives resemble turbulent trials and fears that create just hard emotions inside of us and produce fear and panic, and we feel like we're sinking in despair, know that God is still with us and we should not dread. And though the mountains quake, and we feel like we are unable to live the life that we want, know that God is with us. And he emphatically declares that he will not be moved, that he will always and forever be our refuge and our strength. So I pray for you today that the promises of Psalm 46, that the emphatic declarations of confidence that David had will be yours today, whatever your situation and whatever your trial. Let's pray. Our good and gracious God in heaven, we thank you that when we open your word, we find the lives and the stories of people who have gone before us, who have tested you and who have found you to be a steadfast and a faithful God. We thank you for the testimony of Psalm 46 that gives to us encouragement even when it feels like the ground beneath us is shaken, even when it feels like we are crumbling. And Father, we thank you for those who wrote hymns inspired by these promises that when we are with you, we can lean on your everlasting arms and we can be safe and secure from all alarms and from all dread because you are with us. Bless us and keep us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Andreas, thank you so much for sharing today's devotional. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us for Daily Bread today. You know, as we always do, we like to leave you with a promise that comes from God's word. And today's promise comes to us from Proverbs 2 and verse number 6. And it says, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge. What a wonderful promise, friend. There's lots more promises that can be found in God's word. I encourage you, as always, to pick up God's word. Spend some time reading and studying its sacred pages. Thank you for joining us for Daily Bread today. I hope you are blessed. And I hope to see you again tomorrow. Until then, so long.